Folks, I want to hearken your gaze back to a time long thought lost in the vast misty quarters of time to an era of relative economic prosperity in which our country hadn't just abandoned tens of thousands of people to the predatory claws of the Taliban and ISIS, an era of independent and affordable energy for the United States, an era where a pandemic hadn't yet served as the perfect means for a bloated and corrupt government to seize not only the means of production, but the means of thinking about things like science and history. To a time when a president of the United States said something so mean, so cruel about the undocumented workers pouring through our borders like water through a chain link fence. You may be too young to remember, but once upon a time, there was a man named Donald Trump. And that man said before God and the world and in no uncertain terms that murderers and rapists were crossing our borders. Now, if you were there, you'll remember also that he did not say that everyone crossing the border was that sort, but that the baddies were among them, underscoring the notion that this alone was reason enough to be muscular in our policy concerning the border. And here's my controversial take on this ancient piece of history. He was right. An illegal alien, yes, that is the proper term for this type of scumbag, was arrested about a month ago in Florida after uh, having fooled Texas border authorities into thinking he was an unaccompanied minor. And then he violently killed the Florida man, a father of four, who took him in. Yeri Noel Medina Uloa, who, if you've seen his picture, looks like whatever the Honduran version of Lenny from Of Mice and Men is, stabbed this man and then wandered off covered in blood. Now, when the authorities found him, they were able to follow the trail of blood right back to the body. So, you know, probably innocent, right? Yeah, of course, that's what the bleeding hearts are going to say. Now, in case I talk too fast there, let me just circle back, Jen Psaki style, to one of the points I just brought up. Yeri. Uh, Chris, is that the Spanish version of Jerry? Okay. Um, Anyway, Yeri came into the United States through Texas. Our undersupported border control system being what it is right now, he got through, but he wound up in Florida. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Authorities haven't been able to confirm yet that he was on one of the Biden administration's super secret flights transporting illegals from Texas to Florida, but the victim's daughter has stated that her father went to the airport one day and showed back up with this guy. Now, it sounds like he was trying to do, you know, someone a solid, and it came back to stab him, literally. Folks, can we get the mean tweet guy back, or at least someone who shares an appreciation for the fact that the border crisis really is a crisis? Now, I have to be honest. I never thought that a shuffling, senile old man like Joe Biden could close out his first year in office with so much blood on his hands. I guess I was wrong about that one. But look, people murder each other enough in the state of Florida. We don't need to tag in outside help from other countries. One of the other great tragedies of the border crisis is that it sets a precedent which actually harms those who would come into this country legally seeking the same freedoms that we enjoy. But hey, uh, the good news is the way things are going pretty soon, we won't have those freedoms anymore either and then nobody will want to come here because we will be just like everybody else who's fleeing north at the risk of pissing off the president of nascar i'll say the, the following super quietly now just let's go brandon